uh, we're today interviewing Hugh Montgomery, who is a professor of intensive care medicine at University College Hospital. He's also very concerned with climate change and the impact on, on global health. And he chaired the commission that was set up by UCL and the Lancet on this. Why, Hugh, did you think it was necessary to set that commission up? Well, um, the first thing is that the relationship between climate change and human health has been ignored until the last, actually, the few years. Climate change was normally framed as an issue related to tree frogs and polar bears, uh, which people could then divorce from any particular interest. It didn't seem to relate to them directly. In 2009, we published a advanced commission on climate change that spelled out the impacts of climate change on human health. And the Lancet came back to us a couple of years ago to say all those things we predicted would happen had already happened by then. So we then decided the thing to do was to uh, produce a commission that would not only emphasize those points, but seek solutions to protect human health. And that's what this commission was about. So what do you think is the impact on global health of climate change? Well, I, th I think I would concur with the other co-authors on that commission and with the World Health Organization and others that the impacts of climate change this century will be catastrophic. And we're not talking about the end of this century either. We're talking about huge impacts on the health of us and our children. That's across developing nations and developed nations um, within coming decades. And they'll be for a vast array of different reasons. But this is going to be ugly and it's going to be ugly quite quickly. So what do you think can be done about? What action can be taken that would rectify or mitigate the situation? Well, that was the good news about this commission. So the first element of it uh, mapped the health impacts and did some new modelling to show that they've been underestimated. The rest of that commission really mapped out a prescription for treatment. And what it showed was that the technologies needed to solve the problem are already in existence. We're not actually waiting for some new magic bullet to come along. We've got uh, new technologies that we can deploy right now that will solve the problem. The second thing was then, is there enough money to deploy those technologies? And the simple answer is, there's plenty enough money out there. And indeed, uh, the costs are a relatively small fraction of what's already spent on human health care worldwide each year, and a relatively small fraction what's spent on upgrading or maintaining existing fossil fuel power sources. So we're not really talking about massive excess expenditure. And furthermore, there's some very quick gains uh, to human health and thus help economic gains by moving to low carbon. Um, if we were looking at an upwards of 30% reduction, uh, reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, there'd be savings of around a quarter of a trillion dollars every year in healthcare costs, uh, which would very substantially mitigate the costs of the, uh, of the mitigation itself. The only problem, was the political will to connect the money to the technology. That's where the barrier lies. So it's a question of political will and political intention. Correct, that's the only thing that's now needed is to the political will to connect the money to the, to the renewables and then the problem goes away, or at least is very substantially mitigated. Okay, thank you for doing that, Hugh. We really appreciate it.